Hey you guys, uh, hello and welcome. I hope you guys are all doing wonderfully today. Uh, I wanted to make a quick video on how to grow bulbs. So this is kind of my, the pride and joy of my gardening experience is bulbs. I've been growing them for about 12 years, so a long time. <laughs> and I wanted to give you guys my tips and tricks on how to get them looking their best. So just a disclaimer, this is probably going to be a little bit of a longer video because I have a lot to say, but uh, hopefully there's some really good tips for you guys here to make your bulbs look a lot better. So my first tip is to plant en masse. When I say en masse, I just basically mean planting a whole bunch in one area and not really paying attention to the desired spacing on the packaging when you get them. I think that you can plant bulbs that are like almost bulb tight in the soil and they tend to not be super competitive. It actually tends to really mesh well. The plants will etiolate and spread out to get as much sun as they can absorb. So naturally speaking, it's almost like a survival of the fittest. But if you have really strong bulbs, most of the time, the vast majority of them are going to bloom for you regardless of spacing. So I plant them at like... I want to say a centimeter apart, and this is the result. They tend to do really well for me. Another thing I want to say about spring bulbs is to mix up the species. If you have a whole bunch of different forms together, like these Narcissus and this Tulip and Hyacinth, it just makes the beds look a little bit more cohesive and fluid all the way through, but it also adds a lot of different focal points. So when you're looking at this bed here, you don't just look at one part. You, you, it kind of drags your eyes everywhere. Another thing I really want to say about spring bulbs, in particularly tulips, is you want to pick varieties if you want like a prolonged blooming season that have different bloom times. So a lot of the parrot tulips, for example, if I can find one, uh, they're hiding. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. These guys here, the parrot tulips, are a little bit later. Generally speaking, the Darwin ones and the botanical ones are a little bit earlier. And when you interlayer these different varieties, you can almost double, even triple your bloom time. So if you have varieties that bloom in March, varieties that bloom specifically in April, and then later varieties into May, June, you can almost have tulips all the way from like the 1st of March to Canada Day, so like early July. Another thing I want to say is be mindful of height. I think that beds, generally speaking, perform better, but not only perform better, they're also more aesthetically pleasing when you have a variety of height. And this is because you're going to get less competition because the bloom heads are at different parts. It's more appealing for butterflies and bees. They tend to like this variance. It's not all in one area. And it also just spreads out the color. You get more bang for your buck because it's more of a vertical plane. And I just think it's really aesthetically beautiful. And it also makes it better to water, because if you water these from the top and you have a variance of heights and forms, the water trickles down to the soil more efficiently than if you had a tabletop effect. Another thing I want to say about bulbs is to plant them very, very deeply. Usually on the package they'll say to put, for example, a tulip bulb about five centimeters below the soil level. If you put them deeper, you'll get a lot more staying power in the garden. They tend to last a lot longer for you. Very important when you're planting is to give these guys a little bit of a feed. I recommend using bone meal. I also recommend using blood meal. They really love the potash in bone meal. It really helps them build really strong roots, which will ensure fuller, bigger blooms. And then the blood meal tends to be really good for their leaves, their foliage, and maintaining their turgor pressure and looking good throughout the season. Now one thing I will say is be mindful of what you're going to deadhead. Some plants I've noticed really do not respond well to being deadheaded. I mean, if you're growing these for cut flowers, obviously you can cut them and then harvest them that way. But if you want for them to come back for future years, I really do highly recommend that you deadhead only certain varieties. So jonquils, narcissus, daffodils, anything that looks kind of like this. I really do highly recommend you guys deadhead those uh, just by pinching right at the natural abscission layer right here after they have finished blooming because then th they better naturalize and you get all that energy back into the bulb. 
So what you're trying to do with uh, bulb gardens is you're trying to ensure that most of the energy that they've produced through the season is it, it sort of goes back into the bulb and underground so that it can be preserved for the next year. Now another thing, and that ensures blooming in future years. Another thing I want to say is be sure that you pick varieties that have a reputation for staying power in the garden. This over here is a Kaufmanniana tulip. Really, really good staying power in the garden. Generally speaking, the more showy the variety is, the less staying power it has in the garden. This is especially true of fritillaries and lilies too, I've noticed actually. A lot of them don't have as much staying power if they're more heavily hybridized and thus more showy. So they'll look really, really good for a couple of years, but they don't tend to last very long. Uh, these ones here are actually quite showy. I know that these ones here last decently long. This is the Red Emperor Tulip, really wide bloom. And I know that a lot of the double jonquils actually, or daffodils, will overwinter for you. Now another thing I want to say is you want really good soil drainage. A lot of bulb plants come from Asia Minor, which is modern day Turkey, uh, where the soils drain really readily and you just want to replicate the natural growing season for these guys. It just makes them more happy. Uh, the vast majority of bulbs, everything in this bed, uh, requires a period of vernalization. So what vernalization is, is it's a cold period because they do go dormant in the winter. It's important to keep them in the cold, and by cold I mean approximately zero degrees Celsius for upwards of six weeks because they require this cold period to produce their blooms. Without that, you'll get what's called a blind head. So what a blind head is, is it's a plant that comes up but it doesn't produce a bloom. So you just get a leaf spade and that's about it for that year. You can coax it with fertilizer and get it to bloom the next year, but who wants to wait, right? So you want to make sure that they do experience some cold temperatures for a prolonged period of time before they start blooming. Now these are long day plants, so you want to try to mimic shorter days during this vernalization period, because naturally in the winter time, it's a lot darker, more obscured, and cold, and this is what they need to develop those blooms. Uh, if you want to get these to seed, you can, but I, I think it's a lot more effective to let them naturalize in your garden by producing offshoots and little bulblets. Uh, tends to give you a little bit more staying power too. It's just more of a sustainable way of regenerating them. They're kind of a pain to grow by seed. But if you want to grow by seed, daffodils usually have a pretty low germination rate in my experience. It's usually only about 50%. Tulips much higher, but it takes forever for them to beef up and get enough size to be at blooming maturity. And hyacinths are pretty easy, actually, I figure. Another thing I really want to say about bulbs in general is you want to keep them hot and dry in the summer. For some reason, I've noticed a lot of bulbs really don't like being kept wet in the summer. I think this is because they're from more highly sun-exposed alpine areas specifically within Turkey and modern-day Syria, where they're from. <coughs> Excuse me. And you just want to replicate their natural habitat as much as possible to keep them happy. <laughs> Excuse me. A lot of these plants are toxic is one thing I will say, but you could play this to your advantage. If you have problems with rabbits and deers, a lot of the daffodils, they, they won't even touch them. If you want to deter mosquitoes, Look at that, isn't that beautiful? If you want to deter mosquitoes, I've noticed mosquitoes absolutely hate fritillarias, or fritillaries. But one thing I will say about these guys is they're very aromatic, but not in the best way. They kind of smell a little bit like weed. So if you don't like that kind of skunky smell, probably you shouldn't plant fritillarias. And maybe go with like a lily of some sort instead. Yeah. Um, so one thing I will say is they really do benefit from some liquid feed fertilizer a little bit later. Um, after the blooms have started to deteriorate, it's time to think of an example. This one here bloomed really early, it's just starting to be on its way out. I think when a bunch of those get that way, I'm going to give them a liquid feed fertilizer. And this just helps beef up the leaves so that the leaves can store more energy for the next year.